to make a little note that none of you would know to, to start this morning. I don't want to interrupt the first hymn to, to do that. But uh, you'll notice the first hymn in the bulletin is, Lord, listen to your children play, praying. If you look down at the bottom, it was written by Ken Needham. And Ken is a, was a pastor and a musician and born blind. And he came to our church over in Jackson back in the 70s to minister to us and uh, uh, performed for us and played the piano beautifully and sang and, and uh, worshiped with us and everything. So we still remember Ken 50 years later and uh, everything. So as soon as I saw that, it reminded uh, reminded me of that time. So I just wanted to pass that along this morning. Uh, we're going to have a short call session meeting after worship this morning. So uh, any other announcements that need to be made? All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in, in it. it. Let's stand and welcome the Holy Spirit with us today. Father, once again, to be in your house, to worship, to share together, to hear the word that you have for us this morning, the guidance that you have for our life, the challenge that you have for our faith to carry on your work in the world around us as we go. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear what you have for us this morning. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let us come before the Lord in worship this morning uh, by beginning responsive worship together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love to all who fear him. God, God satisfies, satisfies us with good as long as we live, so our youth is renewed like the eagles. Turn aside and see a great sight. Attune your ears to the voice of God. The place where we are standing is holy ground. In all we seek the one who heals the penitent. Let us worship the Lord now in song. And our first song, our hymn of praise this morning, you'll find on page two, 429 in your hymnals. 429. Lord, listen to your children praying. This is a prayer that we begin our service with. And indeed, we ask him to listen.
now be called a confession come to the bush that burns that is not consumed approach the holy ground where God who is unseen is made known in awe and reverence come before the Lord from whom we cannot hide here all our sins are exposed here and now God forgives us as we confess and let go of our sins. Let us share together in our prayer of confession. Faithful and loving God, we have tried to live without you amid the idols we have created. We have closed our minds and hearts your presence and your invitation. Our advantages have oppressed unknown multitudes of our sisters and brothers who receive only token leftovers from our hands. Our immorality is killing us and them. Oh God, is there any way out of the prisons we have built around ourselves? We plead for forgiveness. Amen. Hear the good word of our Lord. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God does not always chide nor remain angry forever. God does not deal with us according to our sins or repay us according to our iniquities. Bless the Lord who forgives all our iniquity, heals all our diseases, and redeems our lives from the pit. God is merciful and gracious, removing our transgressions from us and pitying all who fear Him. The God of steadfast love leads us from our bondage into freedom from our sin. Praise God. Let us celebrate our forgiveness now by singing the Gloria Patri. Please stand for the Gloria Patri and remain standing for the Nicene Creed. take our hymnals now and turn toward the back to 716 to 
Uh, actually, 717. The Nicene Creed this morning, because we're celebrating communion as it is our tradition once a month, uh, we share in the Apostles' Creed every Sunday, but uh, as a special blessing, we share together in the Nicene Creed on the days that we have communion. So, item number 717, the Nicene Creed. Church, what do we believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Glad to have Bill and Barb back with us. And Bill feeling better and over his and uh, Barb's surgery going well for the first round. Of, the second round is uh, it's uh, Valentine's Day, isn't it? Your second surgery. Yeah. And uh, Michelle has gotten a surgery date for her surgery. It is the 12th, Monday the 12th. So be praying for Michelle. Um, continue to pray for Jeff and Karen, and, uh, and uh, also for Micah. I haven't heard that Micah was supposed to have his uh, uh, thing turned on this week by the doctor to start working and controlling his seizures, and we we pray we can get a chance to talk to Mark to find out if that happened. But, Continue to pray for Micah and his audience that that, that uh, went as scheduled. Uh, other prayer concerns, maybe. I'd ask for prayers of compassion for my sister in law and her family. My brother passed last Thursday. Oh. I know he's in a much better place now, mm -hmm. and I'm happy for him. All mm right. -hmm. So for Maggie's brother's family and his past. Brother Adam, you know, pray for his family. We've all had our losses, and we uh, we understand. 
uh, how that gets us. Bill? struggle from, from day to day, both health-wise and otherwise. So let's uh, it's always keep Tommy on the list. Well, let us go to the Lord now with these joys and these concerns. Uh, it is so good to know that our God loves us, and even when we are saddened by the sickness or uh, distress of other families, whether it be in our own family or be close friends or extended church family or just neighbors, Lord, I, I'm so grateful we can come to you and we can know that you hear us. And you tell us in your word that you know what we need before we ever even ask. And so we're so grateful for that, Lord. We're grateful that you allow us to ask, though, to participate in, in this ministry. And, uh, and we know that, uh, and that any weight that we carry in terms of responsibility is infinitesimal compared to the weight that you bear for us and that you carry with us and that when we are yoked to you that we have all the strength of heaven pulling with us and so we pray lord that you will give us that confidence as we come before you and we know about these that are hurting and that have asked an interest in our prayers and at the same time, we're so grateful that we can come to you and we can rejoice when our hearts are made to rejoice also as we look upon the many blessings that you bring into our lives by your presence with us. So in all of these things, we are bold to pray that prayer that you, our Master, have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has given us a good inheritance in a land flowing with milk and honey, and we cannot forget all the benefits we have received from His hand. His investment in us bears good fruit when we respond to the physical and spiritual needs in our world with our time and efforts and with the gifts that extend beyond our personal reach. Let us give with joy.
please stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings Please be seated. Amen. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses seven through twelve. Matthew seven, seven through twelve. This morning we're going to be thinking about the subject, Discovering the Power of Prayer. Jesus said to them, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asked bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked a fish, would give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, Give good things to those that ask him. Therefore, all things, whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do so even to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His disciples said to him, as recorded in Luke 11, 1 through 4, Lord, teach us. I find it interesting he, they didn't say, Lord, teach us how to preach. Lord, teach us how to teach. Uh, teach us how to start churches. Teach, teach us how to be ministers and do pastoral care. Teach us how to counsel. But they did say, Lord, teach us to what? Pray. Apparently, those that were closest to him saw that the source, the source of his miraculous power came from his heavenly Father. And he often would be in his presence. Pray, because as Jesus said, all these miracles you see me doing, I'm not doing these by myself. I'm just doing what I see my Father doing and what my Father wants me to do. So the Bible says that prayer is such an important thing that I think we should all want to learn to pray. Amen? Amen. In fact, I heard an evangelist say one time, the devil doesn't care what you do if you don't pray. Because it is in prayer that we actually shake the very foundations of hell. So, one of the reasons we should learn to pray is that we can avoid the consequences of a prayerless faith. Luke 18, 1 tells us one of those consequences. He said you ought to pray and not faint. That word faint there means to literally pass out or to fall or to stumble, to, to be so weak that you 
just collapse. And apparently, there is so much strength made available to us through prayer, through heaven. And if we don't avail ourselves of that, then what will happen? We will faint. So there are great negative consequences if we do not pray. So avoiding those consequences, pray or faint. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 tells us to pray or be anxious and fearful. He says, be anxious for nothing, Paul writes to the Philippian church. But in everything, pray. Be uh, anxious or fearful for nothing. And then he also says, and if you pray, uh, in uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, and let your requests be made known to God, and what will happen? The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, so far, we've seen that it, we can pray or we faint. We can pray or we can be anxious and fearful. We can pray or we can have the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, guarding our hearts. Sounds like a good deal to pray to me. And then we can also pray or miss out on a lot of joy. John 16, 24 said, Ask in my name and I will give it to you, that your joy may be full. So are, are your joy tanks running a little low sometimes? I know mine is. And guess what? Uh, the answer is not to go try to look for something amusing or find something exciting or something to preoccupy your mind. The answer is to get on your knees before the Lord and pray. If we pray, we will not faint. If we pray, we will not be anxious and fearful. If we pray, we will have the peace of Christ. And if we pray, we will not miss out on the joy. But the real reason we should learn to pray is those moments, those special moments, those glimpses of heaven when we're in the presence of Jehovah. Uh, the other day, we, uh, you know, Google may not do that much for the world, but they sure have this little device you can say, hey, Google, play in the presence of Jehovah. And it doesn't know any difference between that and rock music or jazz or whatever. It just plays it. And or it'll play some praise song similar to that and eventually get around to it. But you can walk around the house just wanting to wave your hands and say, I'm in the presence of God. And you don't worry about who's watching you. You know. The older I get, I, I declare senior privilege. <laughs> so, if we learn to pray, we can avoid the consequences of a prayerless faith. And then we also can accept the challenges of a prayer-filled life. The scripture that I've read for you here, it tells us, Jesus said, ask and you'll receive. Seek, and you will find. And knock, and it will be open to you. Those, those three terms there are kind of in a progressive sense. Uh, to ask means that you are asking, and actually the Greek word there can mean beg, but it means you see what you need and you ask for it. But there are many times I come to the Lord in prayer, I have no idea what I need. So what do I have to do? I have to seek. I have to, to look for it. But I, And God will let me look for it all I want to. Or He'll show it to me. 
if I seek through him, if I ask and seek. And then once you have found that what you feel like the Lord has revealed to you that you need, then it might be something that has to come directly from heaven, so you knock on the doors of heaven. Saying, Lord, I really feel like I need this. I feel like you put it on my heart. Now, Lord, I, I pray that you will hear my prayer. And it says, knock and the doors will be open to you. So, avoiding the consequences of a prayerless faith and accepting the challenges of a prayer-filled life are all great reasons for learning to pray. But then, asking correctly in the name of all power is an important part of all of this. We come to him, John 14, 13 through 14 said, we ask in his name. And when you ask in someone's name, you're asking in their authority. You're asking for them. You know, you're filling in their name on the check because you have the permission to do that. I, I remember uh, when our children were learning how to spend money, and sometimes I would say, Dad, can I get such and such? And I'd say, yeah, here's a check. Just sign my name to it or whatever, you know. Uh, this is basically what we do when we pray. We pray in Jesus' name. We don't pray in our name, do we? Because uh, our bank is pretty much bankrupt. Especially in the miracle department. So we come and we ask in His name because that is the right name. That is the name given among men uh, whereby at the very mention of the name of Christ every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. And we have First of all, we have to have a right to use the name. Other people can't use my name, but my children can use my name. And if we're a child of the living God, we can use his name as well. So we have to uh, have a right to use the name, and then we have to have a reason to use the name. There has to be a valid reason for why we are asking God for this particular thing. And then if we have the right name, which we do, and we have the right reason, and it all comes together, then we have a reward for asking in His name. He said, if you ask in my name, my authority, and you accept God's will, even Jesus said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Then we can be assured that we will have that heavenly reward of our prayers. So why should we learn to pray? We can avoid the consequences of a prayerless faith. We can accept the challenges of a prayer-filled life. And we can ask correctly in the name of all power. And this is the confidence, John says, that we have toward Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. 1 John 5, 14-15. And we know that He hears us and whatever we ask, we know that it will be granted our request, our petitions that we have asked of Him. So why should we pray? because of the wonderful blessings that God has for us if we pray. And the, what is the greatest blessing? His presence. Now the second thing, what should we learn to pray? Uh, the Lord's Prayer is a model prayer. You know, it is the, the right prayer because uh, Jesus said, this is, when they said, how do we pray? He said, this is the way you pray. 
First of all, you pray to our Heavenly Father. And you pray that His name would be hallowed. Hallowed be thy name. Can we pray that today in our world, in America? Is God's name hallowed? When we pray, we can pray that His name would be hallowed. And we can pray that His kingdom will come right here in the United States of America and that His will will be done just as it is in heaven. And then we can pray and we can ask for our daily bread. And we can ask Him to forgive us of our debts as we forgive our own debtors. We can ask Him to lead us not into temptation and we can ask Him to deliver us from evil. That's a good start. If you are saying, I don't really know how to pray, start with the Lord's Prayer. Pray it often. Meditate on it while you're praying. Don't just run through it like a, a mantra that is meaningless, but think about every phrase in what you're saying. Learn to pray the Lord's Prayer. I heard about uh, two uh, elders one time, they were arguing about the other one's biblical illiteracy, and he said, I bet you don't even know the Lord's Prayer. And the guy said, I'll take that bet. He said, I right, put $50 right here. And they both put up their $50 on the, the table and they bowed their heads. And the first elder said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. The other guy just looked at him aghast and said, well, here's the 50. I didn't think you could do it. How should we learn to pray? Matthew 6, 5 through 8, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray or stage their prayers. They stand in the synagogues and on the the street corners to put on a show. Why? So they can be seen and heard. I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, where should you go? Into your room. That's not even good enough. Shut the door. And pray to your Father in secret, in private, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up or pile up or stack up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. That word also means repetitious. That they say the same words over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Like, oh God, oh, oh Zeus, hear us, oh Zeus, hear us, oh Zeus. And if they, they do all that over numerous times, they feel like eventually he'll get tired of listening to it and he'll do whatever they want. For they think they will be heard for their many words, Jesus said. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask them. The Gentiles, here probably Greek and Romans primarily, turn their prayers into orations and often mindless mantras. But we should enter our private chamber, our prayer closet, we should shut the door, we should close out the clamor, the street noise, any interruptions, distractions, or dissonance, and we should speak plainly from our heart to our Heavenly Father and know in faith that we are heard by the one true and living God who cares and knows what you need even before you ask and will meet your needs. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
There are so many things written about prayer in the Bible. I challenge you just to do a word study on prayer. And you will find numerous scriptures that will challenge you. First Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In other words, we should live lives of prayer. We should be constantly aware of the presence of God. And we should give thanks in all of our situations. And then, uh, if you have decided, as I have, from what the Lord has shared with us this morning, to learn to pray, you say, well, I've been praying for years, Pastor, I know how to pray. Well, then let us all uh, commit to learn to pray better. To learn to not just pray some of the same phrases. You know, when I was growing up, uh, I listened to the dear sweet ladies that prayed for the boys on the battlefield. And when I was a kid, I learned to pray for the boys on the battlefields. And, and I was a little old bitty type. And finally one day my Sunday school teacher said, Honey, what battlefields? This was a time, I was born in 1950, there was a time when America barely was not at war. And, uh, but she had prayed for the boys on the battlefields in World War II and, and Korea. And now her young protege was praying for the boys on the battlefields as well, you know. Why? Because it was just something that I was learning. So how about finding new ways of expressing our prayers, such as to address God, Lord, loving Lord, gentle shepherd, almighty God, lover of my soul, all-seeing, all-knowing God, my rock and my salvation, eternal God, heavenly Father, and the Spirit will show you many more. And learn to use a, a prayer guide. I'll be glad to show you mine. So this is a book of common worship of the Presbyterian Church. And in it, it teaches you to pray for different churches around the world. On Sunday, you pray for the one holy apostolic Catholic church in the world, the body of Christ, the whole church, universal. And on Monday, you pray for the church in Europe. On Tuesday, you pray for the church in Africa. On Wednesday, you pray for the church in the Middle East. On Thursday, you pray, pray for the church in the Pacific Islands and the regions of the Pacific. On Friday, you pray for pray for the church in Latin America, and on Saturday you pray for the church in North America. And then, they, and then not just only that, but on Sunday evenings, if you do your art any day for that matter in the evenings, you pray for those on Monday that are in dangerous occupations, and you pray for the specific Roman Catholic Church on Tuesday. You pray for racial harmony, and you pray for the Orthodox Church. On Wednesday, you pray uh, for those that work at night or have family far away, and you pray for the Episcopal and Methodist Church. Thursday, you pray for those who doubt, the diseased, and those who serve in medical professions, and you pray for the Baptist and the Free Church. And then on Friday, you pray for the hospice workers, the grieving, the aged, lonely, the Reformed Church, the Presbyterians and Lutherans. And Saturday, those who have lost hope, the mentally diseased and mentally anguished, and you pray for ecumenical councils and church agencies. And then when I was growing up, we prayed for missionaries on their birthday both in domestic America and around the world. So let's join the movement of prayer that can shape the destiny of the world. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven 
and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I challenge you to just find a half hour each day. Maybe you pray longer than that. Then wonderful. Then just use that time to bring some of these ideas in that I've shared with you and nourish your soul in God's Word and pray, and it will change your life. If you already do that, then ask yourself if you're feeling revitalized and empowered. If not, bring in some variety and find new ways of expressing yourself. Begin with praise and end with praise. Pray. Say the Lord's Prayer. Meditate on it. Ask, seek, knock. Use supplications, prayers. The Scripture says, use supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving, and finish with praise. During private, secret, experiment. Pray out loud. Sit still. Sometimes be quiet. Listen. Ask God for wisdom to understand and share what you learn. Bow, kneel, even lift your hands. And I do that now because I can't get down on my knees. If I do, I might need a little help or find out what else I can do while I'm down here, you know. <laughs> but I can do this. And use music. And just allow that music to be going in the background, Christian music. That will stir your heart. We should learn to pray. I think life is a lifelong pursuit of learning to pray. And I challenge you that you accept that prayer-filled life challenge. Now let us prepare to receive Holy Communion together. You have your prayer worship sheets there. All are invited to come to the table that confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. This is this is not an ecumenical. I mean, this is, is an ecumenical table. But this is not a, a sectarian table. This is the Lord's table. And not only that, if you're feeling especially sinful, you ought to run down here. <laughs> this is a table for sinners. Let us begin with our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It truly is. And let me move my microphone over here so we can all hear. I'm sorry, I didn't. I normally would have done this earlier, but uh, apparently I let other things get in my way this morning. Oh, there we go. I tell you what, for those that, that may be joining us uh, at home, Let's, let's, let's begin again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back into your way. Then in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, 
You sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us, and to heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In Jesus, born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He opened blind eyes. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. Dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world. Rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. Seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you in glory and will come again to make all things new. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread. And after giving thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising. As we await the day of his coming, with thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Now, if you would, please take your individual cup at wafer and peel off the transparent, see off the top, and you will see the wafer. The gifts of God for the people of God, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Now, if you would take the bottom 
and peel it back, you will find the cup. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. In union with your church in heaven and on earth, we pray, O oh God, that you will fulfill your eternal purpose in us and in all the world. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn. You'll find on page 433 in your hymnal, Sweet Hour of Prayer. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Please stand while we sing this together. And now, Lord, as you have fed us by your precious word, that is the bread that we need, the bread of life, and you have fed us by the body of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, his body and blood, to strengthen us 
and to uh, enrich our lives and to grant your special grace of strength to serving you. Send us forth now into this world to be your ambassadors of grace, mercy, and peace, your agents of salt and light. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And God be with you, be with us all, till we meet again. <laughs>